Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle, and today we're going to go over some ground ladder tips and tricks. Before we get started, we need to go over the importance of ground ladders. A lot of times they go overlooked, especially if you have a truck company or you're not on a truck company, um, or if you're a rural department that, that doesn't have a truck company, you may not go over your ground ladders as much as you need to. The main reason that we use our ground ladders is for rescue. Uh, not only rescue of civilians, but also rescue of firefighters who may become trapped. Oftentimes, as firefighters, especially if we're on an engine, we forget to place ground ladders on, on houses that have more than one story, a second story house or even a third or multiple floor residence or structure. And it's extremely important because if a firefighter is on an upper floor and they become trapped or they, they find a victim, they may go to the nearest window to get out. And we need to make sure those are in place before that happens and not when they're hanging out of the window calling for help. So we need to know how to set up our ladders in order to be very fast at the beginning. If you pull up on scene and you have people hanging out of windows, you don't want something to slow you down that you could have fixed ahead of time that'll speed that process up. So a couple of the tricks and techniques we're gonna go over is how to set up your ladder from the beginning. So one of the number one things I see that slows firefighters down and is completely unnecessary is the way that they attach their halyard to the ladder. Usually it's with a clove hitch, but a lot of times I see people tie the clove hitch around both rungs of the extension ladder when they go to stow it. If you have the, the halyard tied around both rungs, when you go to raise it, you have to untie it first before you can raise your ladder. So there's really no sense in doing that. Make sure if you tie your clove hitch off to keep the halyard out of the way, you would tie it to one rung. The ladder will still operate and allow you to raise it, but it won't be in the way uh, when you go to raise it and you have to untie it to get it to go up. The second thing is, there's many different ways ladders are stored. Some are, are slid into the back apparatus, some are mounted on the side, some are mounted on hydraulic lifts. There's, there's all kinds of different ways. So you wanna go through and make sure you haven't set up the way that you want it and that it's consistent. With this truck, this is a hydraulic ladder rack and the roof ladder is placed on the outside of this ladder rack. Um, a good thing about that is you can pre-deploy the hooks on the roof ladder before you take it off the rack. It's also pretty easy to take both of these ladders with two people and even sometimes with one person. Another thing we want to make sure of is that the brackets that hold our ladder on are well maintained. A lot of times they become sticky and they need to be exercised so that you can get your ladder off quickly. So now I've positioned myself at the tip of the ladder and if your ladders are mounted on the side of the apparatus or if they're on a hydraulic ladder rack like this one, sometimes it's helpful with the roof ladder on the outside to pre-deploy the hooks before you take it off the rack. So if it's set up like this, you can get to it relatively easy and get your hooks deployed before you ever go. A Couple other things you can do with your ladders is put indicator tape or markings on them to let you know either one where the mounts are. Um, so when you go to put the ladder back on, it's a lot easier to get it in the right spot every time. So you can put an arrow and a lot of them actually come that way now. And you can also mark the balance point of the ladder, uh, the middle section of the ladder. And in this case, you can see two blue tape marks that are on the rungs, locate, meaning that this is gonna be the center of the ladder um, so that it's easily identified. You don't have to pick it up several times to figure out where the center is if you're by yourself. Okay, so the main things we're gonna focus on for this video is how are we gonna be by ourselves and be able to perform the functions of raising ladders? Uh, most of the time you're taught to do it with a partner and a lot of people have this idea that if you do it by yourself, you're freelancing and you're not. Um, if you have an officer that's with you and you have to perform these functions while he does other things or gets the saw cranked or whatever the other task may be, it's very good for you to know how to do this by yourself. So the first one we're gonna go over is how to do it just a ladder drag. You can do that with one extension ladder, the roof ladder and the extension ladder coupled together. So right now I'll just show you how to do it with an extension ladder real quick. All you do is lay the ladder on the ground, especially if you're on grass, it works real well. And then go to the butt of the ladder and simply pick it up and drag. Okay, the next one's gonna be when we wanna carry the roof ladder and the extension ladder together, maybe to do a roof uh, ventilation hole and go up to the roof. So one of the first things we wanna do to prepare this is to go ahead and place our hooks in the right position. So we place the hooks up, then we flip the ladder, the extension ladder onto the roof ladder.
now we can grab the roof ladder and drag it so if you have tools your hooks saws halligans whatever you want you can set them on the ladder you can still do this by yourself okay the next method we're going to talk about is how to get the ladder up on your shoulder if you're by yourself. Oftentimes you may have obstacles or debris and you can't slide the ladder, so you'll need to get it up. Most of us have carried a roof ladder by ourselves um, and it's pretty easy to do, but a lot of people don't believe they can do it with an extension ladder by themselves and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so how we're gonna set up is we're gonna straddle the midpoint of the ladder. And the easiest way to carry a ladder by yourself if you have to get it up is to get it all the way up on top of your shoulder. Um, a suitcase carries very hard by yourself, especially when you get to a, a heavy ladder. So what we're gonna do, straddle the midpoint of the ladder. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna reach farther away on the rung with my right hand and closer to the rung with my left hand. And what we're gonna do is basically a power clean. We need to make sure the momentum continues we don't want to break the momentum but once we get momentum started we're going to roll the ladder up on top of our shoulder keep your head up chest up don't bend your back bend at the knees so you lift the ladder to your thighs and in one motion you're going to rock it and flip it up on top of your shoulder to get the ladder down you're going to just do the reverse okay now we're going to do it with the extension ladder same method you do need to practice a little bit but you can do it the same way. Okay, our second method to get it on top of your shoulder is just basically do a beam raise and you're gonna walk it up on your shoulder. Okay, the next step that we're gonna talk about is after we carry the ladder and we get it to the building, how do we want to get the ladder up and be able to do it by ourselves? Uh, so safety rule, number one, always look for overhead obstructions when you're doing this. Uh, but when you're by yourself, you kind of go opposite of what you're typically taught, which is you can place the ladder with the fly section up instead of the fly section down. This will let you raise it by yourself and then just roll the ladder once you get it in place. So I've carried the ladder, placed the butt end up against the building or real close to the end of the building and then I've placed the fly section up so that way I can operate the halyard by myself. So I'm just going to do a flat raise. Typically what we teach with that is you're normally taught to go rung by rung. Uh, even the C-pad says do it rung by rung. It's not the fastest way to do it and it makes the ladder shake back and forth. If you put your hands on the beams and slot it, it'll go a lot faster and a lot more smoothly. Okay, once we get it to this position, you can either raise the ladder from here straight up or you can kick the butt out just a little bit. So if I kick the butt out just a little bit, I can place my knee up against the ladder, grab the halyard, and when I pull back, it's gonna bring the tip away from the building a little bit and I can go ahead and raise it. So you remember what we talked about, if you had tied the halyard together with both sections of the ladder, you wouldn't have been able to do that without untying it first. That's why it's important to leave it tied on one section and not both. Now I have plenty of slack to tie a clove hitch with a bite. Okay, so after we get it raised up, now we wanna make sure we have the proper climbing angle and that we put the fly section on the outside. All right, we're good to go. All we have to do is tie it off. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is talk about how do we stop the butt end of the ladder when we're by ourselves on a slick surface like concrete. One thing we can do is use a pike pole or a, uh, a hook of some sort and slide it on the ground. And then you can use that point to walk into, step on one end, and the other end will capture the ladder for you. Thanks for watching. I hope some of those tips and tricks helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel MS FireNet on YouTube, and you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at MS FireNet.